eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Here at Podcast One, we love hearing from you. We read every tweet and comment you send our way. So don't miss your chance to take our summer listener survey. Just go to podcastone.com and click on the survey banner. Or go to podcastone.com slash my survey. It only takes a few minutes and it gives you the opportunity to make a direct impact on your favorite shows. Tell us how you really feel so we can get to know you better. We value your thoughts and participation. So check out the survey at podcastone.com slash my survey. Or click on the survey banner on podcast one.com Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice for the get on mandate. Get on and welcome to CarCast. I'm Adam Corolla. It's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea. Hello. Over there. Good, Good news. Morning. I know you love yourself some football, Matt. Yeah, hey, I do. Lamar Woodley, man, this guy's been on the Steelers, he's been on the Cardinals, been on the Raiders, uh, won a Super Bowl. I'm a big fan. He'll be in here. James Torres will be in here as well. They host Tackle My Ride. It's uh, produced by Michael Strahan, and even if you don't know football, you know Michael Strahan. I know Michael. We saw him in Monterey. Oh, we did. That's right. That's right. And that uh, premieres tonight at 8 p.m. on uh, NFL Network. Uh, All right. So we'll get to that in a second. We'll bring the fellas in in a moment. Uh, let's see. First, what's going on with you in the car world? With me personally? With me you personally. personally. Yeah. You know, we've been on the road for, uh, it seems, on and off for quite some time. So I was back in the shop this weekend, uh, tooling around on the Mustang. And uh, uh, it's good. Eventually, I'll have it done and you'll get your lift back. <laughs> <laughs> I did the fuel system and I'm, uh, you know, uh, you saw me in there making all new braided lines for the system and putting in a fuel tank and and uh and whatnot so it's it's moving i'm working it's doing good i saw it's it's a little there's a little metaphor for life and uh, (laughs) i tell everybody don't ever get successful because the metaphor for life is if you become successful and you buy a warehouse and you have a hoist someone else's car will be on your hoist and not for the weekend there it will years will go by now matt my, my priest is next there's a queue going <laughs> matt, matt's only i don't know how long you've been on there could it's coming up on a year maybe yeah i've just had under. A, i had a hoist back here had a mustang on it for three and a half years yeah not my mustang so the, the, to be the, fair that never got worked on <laughs> that's true yours yours gets worked on but the point is is be careful about being the dude with the warehouse and and the hoist because it will get filled up and it will not be with your <laughs> shit. That's uh, that's the moral of the story. It's still better to be the guy with the warehouse. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Well, thanks All for right. the lift. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> look, Matt contributes. That's, uh, that's fine. And we're getting another hoist going. We'll talk about that. Uh, I watched the entire Willie T. Ribs doc. With my wife, how's and it? How's son. it cut down to now? How much it's time? Down, it's down to uh, one hour forty six minutes. It's uh, getting submitted to Sundance soon, like in the next day or two. Um, I was just shouting out a few of my notes uh, before I left um, the uh, before I left uh, the uh, edit bay before we came over here. Yeah. So it's getting really good. It's a really good story. I'm, so, I'm, you know, I'm when, really into it. When we went to our uh, Detroit trip to screen the 24-hour war at the Henry Ford Museum, well, obviously we weren't here, but you had Caitlyn Jenner come in with Nate and do an interview for the Willie T. Ribs doc, right? Yes. How'd that go? Did you see any of that yet? I'm not I quite did. sure how you explain. Well, you know. <laughs> I I feel like here here's the thing about editing. Editing is sort of life. And 
it needs to make sense. And uh, just like me and Max Pat are going to take another pass at um, a lap at Monterey and make yeah. it make it even better. <laughs> yeah, we are. Most of it is just sort of like life. Like the thing about Caitlin, yeah, is Caitlin just sort of shows up in the dock, and then later on we see some old footage. There's footage and color footage and, yeah. and cool footage of Caitlin. And Willie T and Scott Pruitt and I don't know who else. And they're all like standing around the ESPN reporter like circa 1986 at Sears Point. He's going, well, we got a real battle growing here. And they're kind of jabbing at each other going, you're going to be looking at my taillights. And like Bruce Jenner's like Ford's number one or or whatever it is. And then I have to go into the edit bay and explain that. It's okay to have Caitlyn Jenner come out of nowhere in our documentary if this other stuff comes before it and there's a context. Right. If you just have her pop up in a ball gown in the middle (laughs) of this racing dock, it's weird and confusing. And then later on when we see the footage, that explains it, but we're still not over the trauma of why this person's in the middle of our dock. Right. So you can show her but we need to see the footage leading up to her that then gives you a contact so that you're not bumped i don't know what is this conversation i have to have with everyone when it comes to editing which is you got to leave a little at the beginning or you got to leave a little at the end or you can't just go from here to there like you need to come like it's a weird thing I get it it's an eight everyone it, i i had a conversation with someone about it which is this it's built into me. It comes easily to me. It doesn't come easily to others, and it makes me angry at others because it feels easy to me, but it's evidently very difficult to other people. Although, whenever I discuss it with them, they always go, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I should have done that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that makes more sense. So then it makes me wonder, did they know it? Could they have figured it out? And then yeah. the bigger question is why. So to backtrack a little bit, Caitlyn Jenner is in this because when Caitlyn was Bruce Jenner was a racer, did, did quite a bit of racing and is, and is, drove is, against <clears throat> Willie T. Ribs yeah. when they would do endurance there's racing. A, there's a good piece of the film that talks about the relevance of all of that, and that's why yes. they're they're in there. And and you know Bruce has done the Toyota Pro Celebrity Race, I believe, and back when he did the car show on Speed. Yeah, uh, he Bruce. came out, and uh, you know, you guys known each other a long time. He's he's a big racer guy. He loves car collecting. I remember on speed, he uh, he had a Porsche. Yep, he brought a I don't know one of the GT yeah, cars. His son GT2, races. GT three. I mean, her like son races. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, we're allowed to call him he because we're talking about the racing. We're talking old about school, the Bruce Jenner, the old school version era, right? Right. So yeah. that's one of the many things I had to sort of clean up, which is we he, she can't just pop up. We need to have some background yeah but the good news is which is weird it's gonna be good drives me nuts with everybody which is like do we not have footage of bruce from 1985 standing around in a fire suit with scott pruitt or yeah whoever talking to will d ribs like we have it okay well then let's use it put that in and then (laughs) then we'll get to this so little stuff like that but that's why I'm the boss, right, Max Pana? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's mainly just because I give a shit. I don't think it's... Uh, also, I don't there was it's... no other answer to that question. I'll, I'll, no, I'll be honest. I mean, Adam and I, have, we've, we've had a, quite, quite a... We spent a lot of time working on this, and it has it's helped in, infinitely. Those are learning editing. moments. Yeah. These are learning like, I, I moments. I understand everything he's saying and why. Thank you. It makes sense. All right. Now, speaking of needing new employees, Zip Recruiter, man. It's tough. <laughs> Sweet. You gotta find someone who can edit. It's tough to find talent out there if you're starting your new business. Zip Recruiter, post your job to 100 plus job sites with just one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job. Unlike other sites, Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding uh, you. It finds them over 80% of jobs posted. Get get qualified candidates in just 24 hours, man. So uh, over 80% find someone in under a day. No juggling emails or calls. Screen rate and manage candidates in one place with the easy-to-use dashboard. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. 
Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash car. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash car. ZipRecruiter.com slash car. Try it for free. Yeah, the other part that's super rewarding about uh, watching a doc with your family is when uh, your wife goes, why are they using that picture of Willie T. Ribs at the beginning? They should use another picture. And I go, okay. And then she goes, <laughs> I'm going to go in there and tell them to change it. And I go, okay. <laughs> Can I go in there? I said, I've been, I've been begging for you to go in there and tell them to change it for, for years. Yes, it'll make things easier on me if you go in. They should change that picture. I, go on in. Go tell them you'd like another picture of Willie T. Okay. At the beginning. It'll, uh, it, it'll, make, it'll be one less thing for me to do, although I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> either way, there you go. How shocked are you going to be when it happens? It's never going to happen. <laughs> but uh, it's a good doc. You can always tell the good, good car docs because it's a car doc, and Lynette's not into cars, and she's totally into this uh, documentary. So, um, uh, does this feel like this is it? To. This is the final cut. You think it's an hour 40 something? No, I just told them to take some out of the top and some out of the back end. And I, I think we'll come in at about, I uh, will probably get about six, six, seven minutes out of this thing. It'll, it'll come in about a hundred minutes. I think it'll be, uh, I think about a, a hundred minutes. All right, so we'll we'll keep you guys posted, but it's a good piece, and it might even uh, make some waves because it's got a lot of uh, social, timely social commentary there. Uh, all right, so what do you got, uh, Matt, the moderator? Well, uh, you know, before we bring the guys in, how about uh, Geico? Okay, why yeah. not? Everybody's got a to-do list. You drop off the dry cleaning, you pick up some milk, and save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. And you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. Just go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your car insurance. So if you need some extra money in your pocket, like I do for AN fittings, yeah. uh, the Get most rewarding to do voice, you man. do today is geico.com. Now I'm looking at this. See, we have a we have a problem here. Yeah. Which is, well, I'll give you guys a uh, a big uh, a big issue in life, uh, which is if you fuck up, you only have to do it about five percent of the time to really fuck everyone else's shit up. Right. You don't have to fuck up half the time. Just uh -huh. fuck up five percent of the time. So uh, Dylan and uh, Kalen. Uh, <laughs> they do do typos 5% of the time. Yeah. Not 50% of the right, time. Right, but right. then I never know. So uh, James Torres is coming in here as the owner of Demented Customs in Hobbs. Except for I don't know what Hobbs is. But we'll, we'll, is that Hobbs like it's a... Uh, like the rock uh, in, the, in Fast and Furious? <laughs> well, maybe it's He's in, Hobbs, in right? Hobbs. Maybe it's a word that I'm not aware of. There's a lot of cool <laughs> hipster custom words. I don't know, or maybe it's a city. It is a city in New Mexico. Okay, so it's in uh, custom. So it's demented customs. Uh, all right, in Hobbs, uh, Hobbs, New, Hobbs Mexico. New Mexico. Well, there you go. All right, well now we got it. Uh, but if we just say he's the owner of uh, demented customs, that'll probably be easier because then I'll, it'll it'll let me know since I don't know what Hobbs is. But Hobbs could be something. That's what I'm saying. Copy that. That's on me. All right, Hobbs is the rock. Right. Now, does he call it Demented Customs, or does he call it Demented Customs in Hobbs? No, it's, that's why we, it, the Demented Customs is, in, uh, is italicized, so you know that that's the name of the place. And then, Oh, it, see, uh, I'm not that smart. But then Hobbs... Wait a minute. It and, is and italicized? Hobbs, it is, it that's it a clarifier. Is, yeah. Yeah. In Hobbs, New Mexico, right there. Is something I should... Uh, how come I won't read that as... I'm not sure. I'm I'm not a good student. That's part of my problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Chris on this one. So it's demented customs in Hobbs, right? In, so I I shouldn't think in Hobbs is part of the. No, you shouldn't. In Hobbs, New Mexico is where he wrote. That seems yeah, but pretty still accurate. Well, what name. about domestic customs demented. apostrophe? Or, I mean, a comma. We could do that next time. That'll but, help me. All right, no, that's what I'll, that's that's what'll help me because the two bullet the, items located in Hobbs, New Mexico. <laughs> the uh, because yes, the thing comes later on, <laughs> yeah. and I don't even know what italicized is. Is that italicized? That, that's the the leaning over. 
Yeah. A little slightly oh, leaning line. forward. It's nuanced. <laughs> but it's close. Yeah. yeah. All right. You could use quotes next time. So, uh, oh, yeah, quotes <laughs> or quotes. something. Yeah. yeah. Anything but uh, give me a little space. Otherwise, I'll just put it all together. Kind anyway, of demented Customs. And he's a former police officer. So he works on rebuilding cars with his sons. And we'll get all into that. Why don't uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. We'll bring him in in uh, one minute. Matt, what are, you, uh, what are you working on? What do you got? What's coming up? Well, <clears throat> we've got a SEMA show coming up and potentially another Trans Am race. We're still trying to put that deal together. Yes. And, of course, that's all going to fall onto the same, like, handful of days to make things complicated. Mm-hmm. The SEMA show is, like, I don't know, the end of October, like, October 30 through November 2nd or something like that. It's, like, whatever the Tuesday through Friday is. Mm-hmm. And then Trans Am at Coda would be, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's say practice or something on Friday. So we'd go from SEMA directly to... The date of SEMA is what again, please? Uh, I don't know the exact date. It's like but it's it's the week of October thirtieth, right? So or October thirtieth. Yeah, it's through Tuesday, like Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday. Okay, yeah. So SEMA would go till November third, and then you'd be in code on November fourth. Okay, right. All right. So we're trying to work that. Yeah. We're trying to work that out. Yeah. We'll keep you guys posted for now, that. For the SEMA plan, we're, we're, we're still working on a couple of deals for that. We do know that our friends at MagnaFlow are going to have a booth there. And I'll be there with Brad and Aaron doing shift and steer. And then I know Chris and I will be grabbing some interviews, running around from SEMA like we usually do, which are always fun. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any other live shows yet, so we're trying to find out. But uh, hopefully Trans Am we get to work out as well. All right, Max Pata, pull up uh, doing uh, one lap of Laguna Seca, and I'll give you a, a glaring example of your bad editing. Uh, <laughs> so we can. By the uh, way, our friends get... over at Burton Racing are, are winning. Like their their team is out there with their driver and their new Camaro and their Corvette C5. They're well, they're sh- winning classes. They got a good team. They should enjoy it while it lasts. So I get to <laughs> see my. I'm going to put an end to that lickety split. Now, Max Pata, if you look at your cut of going through the corkscrew, right up at the top where you go through the corkscrew, you'll see that where you cut it, you cut it just before you can see down the corkscrew to a back shot, which is wildly unsatisfying because the greatest part about the corkscrew is seeing yourself go up and over over the corkscrew. I've done it once. (laughs) All four tires on, on the dirt. And... If you'd held on the, the shot before we went down the court, if you'd held on it for another second, you'd get the you'd get to look down the corkscrew. Right. So you took the corkscrew, which is the biggest, iconic, sort of most exciting corkscrew or turn on arguably on any racing circuit and sort of turned it into a three okay. or four. Everybody knows what it looks like. No, <laughs> you didn't show it. Watch, I'll, I'll, well, Chris I'll is going to be a master of Laguna Seca by the time we're done with this. Yeah, so we 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 go up the back hill. We miss a shift here. We get it right. We set up for the we set up for the corkscrew. We get down to the second. We start turning in, but we don't see gotcha. down the corkscrew. Yeah. And now we're done with the corkscrew. So yeah. you took the corkscrew and you turned it into almost nothing because we couldn't see down. I screwed the corkscrew. You, you, I'm sorry. All you needed was one. You literally needed just one more there. second yeah. or one and a like half a seconds. Second. Yeah. But instead, you just turned it into a left-hand turn and then you cut into a rear shot, which... You could see what was going on, but it was you weren't experiencing the drop in the corkscrew. Show it one more time, just show them what a, right. how how unsatisfying <laughs> that that cut is. All right, turning in, but not seeing down, and then looking back, and then kind of coming out, out of it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I mean, out. it still looks I got good, it. but I see what it you're looks saying. fine. But yeah. you just took a nine and turned it into a four, or maybe a five. Don't do that. Look down, see yourself going down the corkscrew. Gotcha. Okay. You had it coming soon. You got it. Now, is that because I have some sort of special gift? No. (laughs) It is not. I refuse to believe that. No, I mean, you just shared that gift with all of us. That's right. (laughs) Just have it. Get that. Get. No, it's a a thing that all human beings, almost all human beings share, which is weird. An inability to sort of capture that or experience that. But I'm not sure why. 
But that's how everyone is wired. It'll be learned. I agree. We'll learn. To be fair, Chris knows what italics are. That's true, and I don't know what italics are. <laughs> I didn't one. know it meant <laughs> leaning. Like it could be a tie right now. Could be one to one. I have an assistant though who can tell me what a challenge. That, that's true. All right. He doesn't have someone, two, right? two to one. He doesn't have someone who can edit for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, at some point, Max, right, you're going to whack that up where you're going. You, you hang on it for another second and a half where you get to go down, and then you cut back. Yeah, I want to make you feel things. Right. You make you feel. But, things. I tell you, <laughs> yeah, like the, me not feeling angry. The, the footage <laughs> is good. I was the watching camera another guy's setup is good. Yes, I, I was watching another guy's in car footage of like a legit like full on car that's done tons of videos, and his camera was just too high. And the in car was it was too high to see out the window. And then the bottom was just too dark to see anything, and it was just you couldn't you couldn't see where he was racing. It was it was a, really bad placement. I'm like, come on! It was, and I wanted it to be after watching so many of these. I was like, you just got to lower that camera like two inches, and it'd be perfect. So yes, you got the, that part. The footage and the placement great. is great. All right, why don't we get Lamar Woodley and James Torres, and we'll bring them in. I will tell you guys about Simply Safe. S I M P L I Safe, man. Last week for Simply Safe, Matt, you can turn the air on in here, yeah. please. Last week, uh, this is it, man. Biggest summer sale ever. 100 bucks off the special summer package. Everything you need to protect your home and family. An arsenal of security sensors, panic buttons, blaring uh, extra siren, and wireless connection to authorities. Your family, your home, and everything in it stays safe around the clock. No long-term lock-in contracts, no installation costs, no hidden fees. No, not with Simply Safe. These guys are smart. Protect your home today. Sale ends this week. Go to simplysafe.com slash Adam. Get your uh, get your sale on. Good guys, smart guys. Peel and stick. No drilling. No pulling wires. No mess. No felons running around your house. It's simplysafe.com slash Adam. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks for having us. Lamar, put your uh, headphones on in case we take a phone call or something so you'll uh, you'll be able to hear it. James uh, Torres, Lamar Woodley in Tackle My Ride premieres tonight, as you hear this, 8 p.m. on the NFL Network, produced by Michael Strahan. We know him, and he's a car guy. We just saw him at Pebble yeah. Beach a few weeks ago. He was kicking it in the Rolls Royce suite down at Pebble Beach. And <laughs> hey, what color was that Rolls Royce? I didn't have the Rolls Royce with him, I don't oh. think. But like, we're, there was this Pebble Beach as these suites on the golf course, and when all the super fancy cars are going by on the show, and you just go up there and sip champagne and eat their food. And oh, we need yeah. to be there, Dan. Yeah, yeah you need to be there. there. Yeah, Lamar you definitely need to be there. Was part <laughs> if you love cars at all, you need to be at Monterey Car Week. <laughs> yeah. When people ask me, I'm a big football fan and a big car fan, so this is going to work out perfectly. But they say, uh, what's your favorite all-time NFL Super Bowl play? And I say Steelers, Cardinals, James Harrison intercepting that ball on the one-yard line with no time left on the clock and taking it all the way down the sideline <laughs> in the craziness. That's my favorite play, The too. craziness. You don't know anything about football. <laughs> it is a crazy, crazy play, especially because if Fitzgerald would have tackled him on the one-inch line, the clock would have been 0-0 zero, zero and right. everyone would have gone to the locker room. You want to talk about like a 14-point swing. That was a huge play in that game. Were you on the field for that? Yeah, actually, I'm, I was the other outside linebacker. And uh, me and James supposed to have been rushing in on that play. And he dropped off He in dropped the coverage. off. So as I rushed in, um, Kurt Warner threw the ball, and I just hear the crowd just, ah, and I can't see what's going on. I see James Harrison with the ball, and Coach LeBeau always talked about turning around and blocking somebody. Go and block somebody. Right. So as I'm running to block somebody, I see Kurt Warner first. And I'm like, ah, now he's too old. He's, he's slow. I can move on to someone else. So as I, I, as I was going – I went and I blocked Hightower. So I pushed him, and when I turned around, James is still running. And I'm like, I'm out of breath because the Cardinals just had a long drive down the field. And I kept running. I had one last push in me, and I pushed Hightower again and fell, and James jumped over me and went in for the touchdown. And then, like, when you talked about, like, Fitzgerald would have caught him, I think the Cardinals for blocking for us as well. You know, the coaches always say, back up from the sideline. Get out the white. Yeah. All their players was in the white blocking the Cardinals right. player that was on the sideline. Fitzgerald got 
off the he got out of bounds. Right. Yep. And he started running into his own players yeah. as he's trying to run down like he's doing punt coverage and he got pushed out of bounds. It was it was crazy. And yes, if Fitzgerald didn't run into his own guys who were standing along the white, the you know, basically the one yard stripe yep. that's on the side, you're not yeah. supposed to be in there. He could have made it and probably got to James by the one yard line, but he was running into his own guys. Yeah. My other and I'm glad you talked about stopping and blocking because I just saw it. Look how many guys on that play. The I just saw it the other <laughs> night. It's it's the greatest play ever. But you know what I also see in the NFL all the time? The lineman picks up the fumble and he's rumbling down the field. The defensive back who runs a four three forty is sprinting out in front of him, 10 yards in front of him, going, come on, come on. Well, he gets tackled from behind by the tight end. Uh-huh. And the guy in front, instead of being in front yelling, come on, he should have been blocked. He yeah. should have turned around and blocked somebody. I mean, they don't practice on that. <laughs> I guess they don't practice <laughs> they don't, on that. And you know, the, the worst people to me, when, when the offensive lineman, when you, as a defensive player, if you get the ball and the offensive lineman turns into a tackler, they try to take your head off. Oh, yeah. Well, I They're remember angry. One time I got a pick against Tennessee, and I was running. I just seen two big offense linemen. And Chris Johnson grabbed me. I just went down right away because those offense linemen going to try to take me out. Well, I got to <laughs> I gotta tell you that, and you probably know this. We'll break it down, then we'll get into some car stuff. Okay. The offensive lineman in the NFL – was the best defensive lineman in his in the county of his high school. The, everyone plays two ways when you're right. in high school, right? Mm-hmm. right? Offense sucks. Like when you got to play offensive line, that's the worst job on the field. It's boring as hell. You want to play defense, it's fun. But at a certain point, these guys that were probably all city on defense and maybe on offense or right. whatever, at a certain point, they get to college and they have to declare. You want to play offensive line or defensive line? And they all want to play defense, but somebody tells them you got a better shot at the NFL if you play guard. Right. So they push them into this position where they have to block their entire career, but they're dying to tackle somebody because <laughs> that's what they were all city in right. high school and maybe even played a little defense of line in college. But once they get to the pros, you play offense. You don't go both ways. But when Lamar picks off a pass... They get to play oh, defense man. for yeah. just a second, and they're angry. Oh yeah, you that can you, you pick off the pass. You can look. In, I was looking into those guys' eyes as I was running. I'm like, and they was just high knees. <laughs> <laughs> you can just hit a footstep. I'm like, oh shoot, it was two of them. Chris Johnson grabbed my just feel right down. Like, oh, thanks, Chris. You got to protect the ball, man. <laughs> so Lamar, uh, I want to get into both stories. And, and James, good to have you as well. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, what got both you into cars? Start with James. We'll get your story, and then we'll get into uh, Lamar. Man, I've I've been into cars ever since I was a kid. You know, just uh, doing customizing stuff. I had an '85 short wide Chevy pickup when I was about 19, and I've always just customized it. And then, uh, you know, over the years, went to work in the oil field, went to be a police officer, and I started painting and stuff cars because I wanted flames. And nobody in my small town, which I heard y'all guys trying to figure out where Hobbs is at. We're in the <laughs> southeast corner. We're not New sure Mexico. it exists. I don't know where New Mexico is, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's pretty tough to find. Um, you only end up there, you know, unless it's by accident. I mean, it's you, you have to be going there. So, uh, but I started painting and, you know, doing car stereos and stuff back then. And uh, over the years, it was always just a passion. And uh, whenever I quit the police department, I was working narcotics and stuff. I was a single parent trying to find something else that I could do and still be able to raise my kids at the same time. And just went into a body shop and been doing custom stuff ever since. And told the guys there, hey, you know, one of these days I'm going to have a TV show. One of these days I'm going to be like the guys on Pit My Ride. They said I was crazy. So what's another name for crazy? When a guy said demented, I said from now on I'm demented customs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, ever since we've been making things happen. What's it take to spray a car? And I'm asking for personal reasons because <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of, like, I don't want the full, like, I might spray one car a year, but I got a shop, but I don't want to go full, you know, f- 
full Monty with the big spray booth and all the fans and all the EPA and all the whole thing. But also, I don't want to... Well, you, you just know, ruined it now. Well, I, I don't want to put a refrigerator box around me yeah. and spray it, with, spray it with a rattle can. Like, is there kind of a mobile or an, a way to do it that's a little, little, little less impact? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, put up plastic and stuff and they'll, you know, they'll just drape it and they'll spray inside a, a homemade booth. Um, I've sprayed stuff, you know, back in the day, helping people where a guy followed me with a car battery and a headlight because we didn't have any lights in the booth and uh, having to spray or in his shop and having to spray one panel at a time because the little compressor would run out of air. Right. So you paint the fender and let that flash and paint the door and let the compressor build up. Wow. So How'd it turn out? It, 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 was, it was bad. It was, it was bad. So, um, he was doing he, a really deep candy that he, day as well. Yeah, Just it, tiger striped all over the place. Yeah, it, Wherever it, the light was flashing, that's where it, it was. It was all single stage, too. That oh, was the bad part about it. So it was even worse, yeah. So, Lamar, yeah. Your, your love of vehicles, where'd that kick in? Um, that's from walking. <laughs> I, did, I did a lot of walking. Uh, but no, I, I got in the cars probably when I was in college. Like I'm underneath the hood. I'm not into all that. I'm just into like a original look of a car, and like different cars. Like I drive my I drive my Mini Cooper. I used to have my '96 Buick Roadmaster. Like I'm into yeah. like the the old. What year is car. your Mini Cooper? It's a 2012. Okay. 2012 Mini Cooper. It's insane how big that car is on the inside. Oh yeah. You know? Pendulette. Right. Is a huge it's, dude. I'm he had you, one. A thing about I had big one. dudes and little cars. I just it's easy to park. Like when when I go to the parking structure. Yeah. Like if I'm going to like an event downtown and they got like that compact. Everybody's in big cars. I'm right yeah. there in the front, so I'm guaranteed a good spot. On the, on the first row. Now, Penn had a Mini Cooper, but now he's got like a Leaf or something? Yeah, he's got a Leaf. He's got a Leaf. <laughs> he hates cars. He, he hates, hates himself. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but I'm just saying, like, I used to have a Mini Cooper S, and it's so big inside. It's absolutely yeah. insane. And, and Lamar's, uh, I mean, Lamar's a huge guy, but how tall are you, Lamar? I'm only 6'1". Oh, you're only six yeah, one? I'm just wide. You're I mean wide. only. I'm, I'm only 6'1". <laughs> Everybody, they, they think I'm taller than that. Yeah, yeah. Well, T- tell them who all you had in the car the other day. When when you had your dad and your cousin. Oh yeah, I, me. So we was in the Mini Cooper because I got I have the Countryman, the four door. Right. Um, it was me. My dad is like six. My dad is six five. He was driving. Um, my dad's like six five, maybe two forty, two fifty. My other cousin was about six two. He's about three something, and I was in the back seat. And we was rolling. So you're like the run to the family. Huh? You're like the run to the family, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that, yeah. It's a good I, it's a, a big boy. It's a it's a good it's a good example of engineering. Like it's a good the Mini Cooper is like I remember somebody tweeted me over the weekend and said like worst car ever and I said AMC Matador from the seventies. <laughs> the AMC Matador was a huge car that had no room inside yeah like it was all trunk all hood if you find a picture of like a 77 amc matador you guys will see what i'm talking about like huge fenders but skinny tires like huge huge everything but like no room inside there's your amc (laughs) matador like imagine crawling into the back seat of an amc you could not get your dad and your cousin in the back seat of that or you in the back seat of that amc matador so it's got can't park it horrible mileage horrible handling and no room like lose 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 and mini (laughs) crappy car mini's kind of the opposite of that it's just tons of room good performance especially if you get the s good Good mileage good sound system too all-wheel drive I mean, just overall, just a nice car. Like, yeah. I drive it in the winter. Yeah. Well, you got the Countryman, which is a little bigger than the all-wheel drive. You, yeah. had, you had the Coupe. I had the Coupe uh, S. But it worked, it worked fine, except for uh, my friends calling me gay. But I was explaining <laughs> to them, listen, I got the Turbo. Uh, sorry, Supercharger. Yeah. I got it in gray with the black roof. And I got the six-speed. If yeah, it's yeah. automatic and it's in cinnamon and it's a convertible... Then it's a different story. You, you, I know you like the Mini Cooper GP. Chris, see if you can find the Mini Cooper GP concept car. It's like a, it's, it's, it's a design that's supposed to come out like a year. Wait to see how sick this thing is because they're trying to go. You know, they've, they've done what, like two GPs? Like two I, generations I the of first, GP, uh, the first the gen- gray with the red, uh, with the red mirrors, red and stuff. mirrors, and no and, back seat, yeah. just like the uh, 
a sway bar, not sway yeah. bar, but the like shock, a harness bar, the, the shock tower yeah, yeah. bar yeah, that went from yeah, that's 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 one. like a station wagon, is it? It's the one on the left, oh, far left. Man, look at that with with the yeah, it's not you got a good angle, view? but uh, if it's got a if it's got a roof oh. scoop, yeah, look I'm that in. middle one there with the guy. Like, look how sick this thing is with. With the crazy wing and the fender flares and the vents on it. Is that and all-wheel the, drive? I don't got, know if it is going to be. But it, it's got to be. Oh, it can't I just like be front-wheel drive I, that I think way. it's going to be sick, though. I don't know if the real car is going to end up looking like this, but I kind of hope it does. I'm sure they'll only make a handful of them. But they've 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 stepped up that game with the GP. They're like, right. let's make the let's make the Mini Cooper like like a real like a legit track performer what now, like a Nurburgring kind of car. It's to be kind of cool, yeah. So, uh, James, what is the average? You probably work on 85% American cars. Yeah, yeah. The majority of this stuff is, you know, just restorations and stuff. Uh, Are you doing I, full restorations now? Yeah, yeah, we do full restorations. I've actually done some vehicles for mutual friends of both of ours. Uh, we did the black Trans Am that Goldberg has. Oh, oh Goldberg, yeah. The, Bill, yeah. The one that There's was, a wide guy. Yeah. So, we did that one. Uh, you know, we did uh, Strahan. We did a 68 GTO for Stray. Um, Strahan, we, Strahan may fill the void that Reggie Jackson leaves behind. Reggie Jackson was the big car guy. Yeah, jock, he still is. And, yeah. yeah, I know, but he's getting a little up there in mm-hmm. years. And he ha- it was all about, I think for Reggie, like a lot of Copo <laughs> stuff and American stuff and American muscle and... <laughs> All that kind of stuff, and I feel like maybe Strahan's going to slide into that into that role. So, uh, what does Goldberg, Strahan have? To, does he, anybody know? He does. He does both. He has uh, now. He's getting into the uh, classic Ferraris and Porsches and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but he it's he's got a lot of uh, European <laughs> stuff, and and then he's got a lot of American stuff as well. What but year is the uh, really Gold, a car guy? Do you say the Goldberg Mustang was a '69? No, he had a. a it was, yes, a it was the Trans Am, uh, the yeah. Firebird. Oh, oh, sorry, Firebird. Yeah. Got screwed but, up. Uh, Reggie Jackson has a great collection of of engines, like rare muscle car engines, not just the cars. He does have something that's kind of unique in his collection. He's got some pretty cool, like I, rare big I blocks think, and stuff. Yeah, he his whole thing is American, but really rare American, you, and also he so, does have the cool collection of muscle cars. So yeah. that's where the Copo stuff comes in, yeah, and that's also. Where that's also he uses a baseball bat as a cane. That's interesting. Oh no, he's probably just showing off. Okay, and also he uh, he also has the uh, what is the factory invoice whatever ones that came. What is the other acronym? He's got Copo and he's got the Yenko cars. Yenko and, he, and Copo. Yeah, yeah. and Copo, Copo is the factory acronym you're talking about. Right. We'll figure Yenke it out. Yenko is the other guy. Yenko's the guy. Copo's the uh, factory. Yeah. But. But it just, I guess the moral of the story is, if you're ordering a new car today, get it with, you know, radio delete and cloth inserts and a color that nobody else has and whatever. Because later on down the road, when it comes to these old cars, like if they're talking about, you take just like a, 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 a CUDA. You go, okay, here's a CUDA. Okay, this one is worth... 50 grand but wait a minute this one has the hemi in it uh-oh and this one is a four speed uh-oh yeah. and this one is the only one that came in metallic silver with a black interior and all of a sudden it's and now oh, this yeah, one's that, a convertible the, the and now it's two million cars. it's two million dollars now american muscle cars especially like yeah this has got the factory 370 gear there's only did nine of those i'm like it's right. a gear like yeah i know but this is it's, if it's on the build sheet it's, it's got the diff cooler yeah <laughs> like and all of a sudden it just keeps going yeah. and going it doesn't really you know ferrari daytona is a ferrari daytona it's a great car but they're all just 700 grand and they're all the same car it's not like you could get yeah. all the engine engine and possibilities. i don't think the italians were as good at documenting all of the features you know like if you start restoring muscle cars like i'm sure you do like if you don't have the right like marker marks or hash marks or chalk or whatever yeah. on the on the transmission or whatever. <clears throat> There's some judge. It's like you don't have that mark. What do you mean <laughs> you don't have that? You're yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, we've we've done some cars where you know the customers actually brought in a sheet to follow that this bolt has to be a specific color and has to be turned at a yeah. certain you know degrees and marked in a certain spot. You know, and yeah. I'm like, wow. And, 
with the Italian guys, it's like you get into some of the cars, the e-brake, sometimes on the left side of the driver, sometimes on the right side. And we've asked many times, like, why is that? And they're like, whoever put it in just felt like, you know, maybe the guy was left to your righty. It's like whatever he's feeling that day. Right. And I don't think they've ever, like, documented where, like, hey, there's, you know, so many Dinos with a left. <laughs> e-brake yeah, right. don't, you don't. you know what I'm saying like I think it's just what, kind of a weird when, thing I think it's when you drink wine at lunchtime <laughs> I think a lot of stuff sort of falls through the cracks yeah. you know in terms you of have documentation a of Chianti for, <laughs> you, you don't sweat the details when you drink red wine for lunch uh, so the show tackle my ride uh, let's talk about let's talk about what's coming up who's on it we know Strahan how did they straight did Strahan approach you guys you approached Strahan how did it work no, um, actually, uh, I was approached by uh, the production company, Left Field Productions. Uh, NFL Network was looking at making the show, and they were looking for somebody that was associated with football and, and cars. And uh, our name came up, and we got to audition for it, and then we got the job. And Then afterwards, they brought in Stray and stuff as executive producer of it. And, Give us but, the uh, format. The the format for the show uh, itself, yeah. um, what, what it is, is uh, we team up with the NFL teams and players, and we select a deserving fan um, to go out and, and customize their car for them. Uh, we're not going over the top. We're not doing anything um, outside of something that's going to help them in their day-to-day stuff. Uh, just more of like, you know, a lot of customizing, custom paint, some wheels, uh, bolt-on accessories, Suspension. Um, We're looking know, some, at the uh, Seahawks Dually right now. <laughs> so, so, some performance modifications and stuff. You know, what it is is uh, these fans do a lot of stuff for kids in their community, and they neglect themselves. So it's the, you're finding deserving people, folks. That how are they nominated? Does somebody nominate them? Yeah, usually uh, friends or family. Yeah, the, and then um, the friends and family nominate them, then uh, the teams pick them. The team and players select uh, which fan they think deserving to uh, get their ride tackle. Right. And the crazy part when y'all was asking about the audition earlier, that's not how it went down with me and James. <laughs> so when James was already on, so when I came and auditioned for it, um, we was at the NFL Network. I didn't even know who James was. So we, I was in the room, and we just started talking, right? We're, we're just talking. And then um, I go in there by myself, and um, I'm doing, like, the testing um, with just me, just, uh, you know, uh, with the camera. And then they bring James in. I'm like, oh, that was the guy I was just talking to. Yeah. And we, like, just hit it off. And what was that quote we said from the Ninja Turtle movie that <laughs> we really, like, clicked on? Yeah, it was because of the team. It was a team. It was, it was and then because Master Splinter told Leonardo about everybody's going to be different from the team. Yeah. yeah. And something like that. Yeah, you just ruined everything. We and just did for the last 41 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we, well, we, that's what we hit it off on. It was like some Ninja Turtles stuff. We were like, oh, yeah, you seen the turtle movie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, think, I, think, I think another reason we passed the chemistry test is because we started talking about each other because he asked me why I have two different shoes on because I wear two oh, different yeah. colored shoes. Weird. And I asked him why he wears two watches. <laughs> oh, because if you notice, he has wow. two watches yeah. on now. Touché. Yeah. So I didn't think about that. That was like that was. I think that was icing on the cake. They were like, "Hey, <laughs> both, these, both these guys are demented, so we got to put." Well, them I'm going to tease that, but I'm, I'm going to find out in a second why two watches and why two shoes. And first, I'll tell you about uh, Bluehost, top-rated website provider. Powering 2 million plus websites, best tool to build, host and manage your personal or small business website, freedom to design your site your way, fully customizable templates, and third-party app support. Simple enough for beginners and powerful enough for advanced users. True reliability, 99.9% uptime, guaranteed, and auto updates. Maximum security, malware monitoring, and protection, and automatic secure WordPress installs. You know all about this stuff, right? You, you, Matt, you, you yep. ran. You, you should brag a little. Plus 24-7 tech support, all very important. And you can save up to 50% when you sign up at bluehost.com slash carcast. These guys are good sponsors. You hear it here, and you check it out. Blue host.com forward slash car cast all right so uh two shoes and then two watches what's up with the shoes <laughs> well 
a couple years ago. You yeah, don't know your right from one wife. of my other <laughs> one of my other sons. Uh, I have I have four sons and then I have one daughter. Ten kids. Um, so yeah, Wood says I have ten kids. <laughs> so uh, my seven year old, he's seven years now, um, was walking out of the house one day and decided he wanted to put on two different shoes because he was being in a hurry. So the wife's like, "Why are you wearing two different shoes?" He said, "Well, today's crazy shoe day," and uh, she got on to him for it, and he went back upstairs and changed shoes. So then the next day, I started wearing two different colored shoes, and I said, "From now on, it's crazy shoe day." So now I wear two different colored shoes all the time and it's expensive because i have to buy two pairs every time so that i can <laughs> so that i can wear them but uh, because they have to wear evenly that would annoy yeah, me you, if they you, don't you wear have, evenly yeah you have to buy like i have to buy an abundance of the same yeah. co- same style and then well, i can just interchange colors as i go I, I had this thought because i got uh, a dog Phil's here, isn't he? Oh i left him at, the other i left him at the other shop i got a 110 pound lab that likes to chew everything but he chews one shoe. He doesn't chew both of them. <laughs> but then I'm just stranded with the one shoe. But one shoe is as good as no shoes. But I wanted to start a shoe exchange program. Other people that had Labrador puppies could go, hey, I got a Skechers size 11 blue slip on. <laughs> right. My dog got the right one. What did your dog get? And then we could start this sort of yeah. mix and match. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a day of Uber and Airbnb, this is the yeah. next evolution of that. Because we got flip-flops, we got tennis shoes, we got my kids, we got my wife, we got me, we got one shoe, and Phil has eaten the other shoe. But I'm sure there are other families that we could pair up with. Ooh, we should call it pairing up. Yeah. I've got got a buddy that showed up at the shop. He's got uh, Great Danes. And he showed up at the shop, and he's one shoe, the back of his flip-flops, just gone. And I'm like, dude, what happened? the dog chews it up. They, they, he goes, but they always chew up just one. Yeah, I know. They That's the, I the wish pair. they would chew them both equally. I could sleep <laughs> That's at night. That happened. <laughs> and Lamar's got two watches. I'm guessing one's for go and one's for show. Exactly. See, somebody finally understands. I understand it. He understands. He got a gold Rolex on one. You know, was that a Submariner? What is that? Uh, no, that ain't nothing. They just watch. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it is a Rolex I had got a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the I, this is a this is a, a phone. And see, I have, to, I have to charge this up. Apple Watch. Yeah. You know, so this is not really a style look. This is a style look. So, so when I don't want to have my phone on me all the time, I just look at this. And when I want to look a little stylish, I keep this on, so I got to keep them both on. Somebody's yeah. got to get that Apple technology into a Rolex. Yeah, Tag right? does. Uh, they do. Tag Hauer has their their uh, their smartwatch looks like a regular Tag, and you can sw- swipe different faces onto it and screens. You can make it look traditional. You can do the whole thing. That's where we're. And you know who showed me it was our, our friend Dan uh, Sandberg, who's the CEO of Brembo. Mm-hmm. He's got one. He's like, look, I got because he showed me at the Peterson along those. See, there goes a fancy. We're looking at tag. one. Yeah, it kind of reminds I mean, not to, like, me. Not shit on your point or anything. Like, I, you, I get the two. Watches you still got to charge that up <laughs> yeah. though. You know, it's good. No, no you do. Yeah, yeah. See, but you're you're saying is there like a fancy version? Well, of, of an I, here's iWatch. what I'm yeah. thinking about, and maybe this could be a project for uh, James. What I'm saying is you. You rebuild one of these, you know, a 55 Chevy, but the dude wants the modern sound system in the car, but you hide it. You know what I mean? Like you'll put the thing that comes down or you put it in the glove box or you put the DV, you put the CD player over here. Or you put the, blue, you know, the Bluetooth, Bluetooth or yeah. whatever. Like you, you stash it because mm-hmm. you're trying to keep the original yeah. vibe and the original look. And I'm just saying somebody's got to take Lamar's. I uh, Apple Watch uh-huh. and take the Rolex and sort of shove it in the Cuisinart and have something <laughs> spill out that has all the look of the Rolex yeah. but all the functionality yeah. of the Apple Watch. And right now we got it. I would with agree, the but tag. we've been reading so much about Rolex watches recently that I'm not sure you should put them in the Cuisinart. One, uh, <laughs> they're they're looking at a Paul Newman Rolex that's going off at auction. Coming up on October 26th. 26th, New York. Is it in New York that they think may break the record? You guys want to take guess a guess on what's the world what the record watch? for a Not watch? Not for a Rolex, just for a wrist the, watch. The most expensive watch sold at auction. What do you think the world wrist record watch. is? It's got to be about a million dollars. Million dollars, so so tomorrow, uh, James. Well, I wear a swatch, so <laughs> I'd probably say 1.5. Okay. 1.5. 11.1. Million dollars for a watch, for a watch. For just one, just one, just one watch, one watch, <laughs> and sold in stainless steel, not in gold. Holy. What is so special? Is it an old watch from like back in the day? 
It, it's from the 40s, I think. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. And obviously it's rare. But here's an interesting thing coming full circle to the cars and the, what the different options are. So it's a sort of pedestrian, kind of basic-looking stainless steel watch. Your, your gold Rolex looks like a lot more watch than yeah. this watch. This watch, they, was it a Philippe something? I think it's or a something? Patek Philippe. Right. Um, that's the Newman watch. We're looking at the, the Newman Patek watch. Philippe. If Patek I'm saying Philippe, it right, yeah, they it's made a world record like watch. 250 watches all together, and like 246 of them were gold, but four were stainless. So thus, the stainless oh, becomes worth more than the gold, not because stainless is worth more than gold, but it's more exclusive. So don't always think bigger is better yeah. or whatever. You want exclusive. Right. We've That's been doing a lot of saying. watch research. We've been doing <laughs> a lot of watch research. <laughs> this Paul Newman watch is going up for sale for a lot of money. And wow. We've got a big collection of Paul Newman stuff, so we're trying to figure out like what is the watch going to affect positively. You know, the suits he has, and the helmets he has, and the cars he has, and you know, obviously, we're hoping yes. And back to uh, <laughs> football. If uh, Lamar is a student of the game, uh, Walter Payton, I have one of his fire suits when he raced back in the day. So Walter Payton retired from football, got into automotive racing. Raced with Paul Newman and his team for a, a season or so. I actually have one of the cars he drove for a season, and the and, racing suit. and and the racing suit that he wore during like nineteen. I'll probably be like eighty eight, eighty nine. <clears throat> no, probably eighty nine, ninety something. Yeah, something like well, the that. The car is a eighty nine, ninety. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He drove a couple of them, and uh, he, he actually drove some. Sort of single seater, sort of. I think he drove some open wheel cars. No, it was uh, like Can Am, oh, not oh, yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. Chevron yeah. style one the is. The one with the with the with the yeah. hidden rear wheels and the yeah. But he, I have the skirts on the rear wheel. I have his Oldsmobile Cutlass Trans Am car that I think he won a race in. And he was actually so. pretty good. And uh, back back in the back in the day, so a, a little football into the racing world. I don't know how those guys do it. I had a chance to to go around like. Um, NASCAR came to not NASCAR, but NASCAR is the ones with um, the tires not showing. Right? What's the what's the what's the car? <laughs> Indy. With? Indy. Indy. I yeah. just found out it was a difference. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I went on. The, Thank God you host the show <laughs> yeah, about cars. <laughs> no, but I didn't. I didn't know about the the, the Indy and the, and the NASCAR. So yeah. I had a chance to do the first two laps around, sit in the back seat the of tandem. one of the car. Yeah, yeah, the tandem car. And that seat was so small. Oh, yeah. yeah. And my knees, and I was sliding like I had no room, so I kept sliding down like. I can't wait till this race is over. Like I don't know how they do that. The entire race just well, going around. Mario Andretti is not six one and two forty. I can tell you that much. <laughs> and neither is Tony Kanaan and Marino. Yeah, they're all and small. They're all, they're all like all my size small guys. Oh, yeah. They're all small guys, and they they they. they it's the tandem car. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I rode in one of those too, but it didn't it didn't work right. Mario Andretti was driving it at. Uh, was he at sipping on Chianti? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going he's around like, after lunch. He's, he's holding it in his helmet. <laughs> well, <Get> a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it, it's a huge. I mean, if you you know, if if everyone's 160 pounds and you're 260, that's a major disadvantage. That extra 100 pounds, you cannot race. Like maybe NASCAR, no F1, no Indy, and probably not even NASCAR. Like it, you, other than Tony Stewart, who who's like he's there's got no a little big, bit of a belly, but there's they're no all... big dudes in. Yeah, maybe in NASCAR, and then yeah. I don't know. Like for Danica Patrick, would they add weight to the car because she's 115 yeah. pounds? Yeah, I feel like that's a Rutledge Wood question. <laughs> oh, all right, we'll talk. And it's hot. Yeah. And those suits yeah. are hot. You put that suit on that helmet. Oh yeah, it was hot. Yeah, but not yeah. as bad as two a days in football back in the day, right? Well, at least you can take your helmet off in there. You just riding around in the car, just <laughs> you can't take that. <laughs> you can't stuff get off. out. By the way, like you're in, <laughs> right? You're yeah. in. Where yeah. did you play your high school ball? Uh, in Saginaw, Saginaw, Michigan, at uh, Saginaw High School. So those two a days had to be pretty hot, right? Yeah, practices, and we just had one practice. We would go from eight to twelve because our coach knew if he let us leave, we wasn't gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> so we just had one practice. <laughs> we'll take like a little small break. We'll take a whole bunch of breaks, but we had one practice. That was it from 8 to 12. In football, normally they have, like in the preseason, or they have these two-a-days like in high school. And the worst part about the two-a-day is it's it's in like August and September, and you just sweat your ass off. 
during the morning practice, right. and then you're supposed to come back during the afternoon practice at like two o'clock or four o'clock. But your stuff's sopping wet with sweat. So the, gross. You're then. pulling on all your gross, weird, sweaty stuff from yeah. that day. It's they not don't like have helmet dryers, like Canopus trailer. No, they don't have like a laundry service that comes in your high school and launders you, all your you stuff. Know what? Some high schools that has a lot of money has that. Well, no, that when, was not us. In our high school, we washed our clothes once a week, and that was just on Friday. So you wore the same your same jersey, everything every day, and then on Friday you take it home to clean it for next week. Yeah, so we washed our pa- once I washed our practice tough. stuff once a week. Yeah, it sounds a little rough. <laughs> well, as long as we're talking about football, let me tell you about my bookie, man. <laughs> when you're betting, it's uh, important to uh, it's, been, it's important who you're betting on, but uh, who you're betting with. Maybe even more important, mybookie.ag. They've been in business for years. Their reputation is rock solid. One hundred percent cash bonuses and the fastest payouts. Just two business days. In-game, live betting, oh, that's the funnest part. It's opened up a whole new world, man. The most rewarding player perks in the business and all-new mobile site that makes wagering on the go a breeze. Join now, and my bookie will match your deposit with up to 100% bonus. So use the promo code CARCAST to activate the offer. Right at the beginning of football season. Let's have a little fun out there, people. Visit mybookie.ag today. Mybookie.ag. Go today. You play, you win, you get paid. I'm going to have to get involved with that next week. Super easy over there. (laughs) Lamar, where do you live now? I live back in Michigan. Um, Right in uh, Novi, Michigan. It's about 30 minutes from Ann Arbor. Uh, about 30 minutes from downtown Detroit. So uh, home is where it's at for me. And where do you guys shoot the show? All over, depends wherever, on where, wherever yeah. the in fan Hobbs. is. Where and definitely in Hobbs. In Hobbs. And yeah. I didn't go to Hobbs this year because last year when I went, James had no air condition. He had <laughs> one fan and it's hot as hell all day in that shop. Yeah, nothing but just dust. I said, "Hey, James, I'm out of here, man. I'm going back to the hotel. And it, it, <laughs> it was too much. It was 100 plus this whole time. It was, too, right. it was too much. Man. So, can you guys yeah, tell us there. some of the cars that you worked on this season, or can you not reveal them yet? Like. Like, um. Yeah. You know. We. we yeah. We've you're got, getting a thumbs up from here. Yeah. I mean, we. Can, you know, we can indiscreetly do it. Uh. You know, we've got a, a E350 van for one of the vehicles. Uh. We have a Saturn. Okay. That we did. Mm-hmm. Um. What else did we do? What else did we? Oh, do? we did the expedition. I mean, yeah. We we have we have an SUV. Uh. That we did a, a Navigator. Oh, um. Yeah. Then we got a, a Honda Accord. So it varies. You yeah. know, it's it's all over the board. And uh, we're traveling all around the country, finding all the teams. Yeah, we're actually going to these people's cities. Except for, so. except for the Patriots, because Belichick said, no fucking way. <laughs> You're not doing anything. <laughs> Take your cameras, get out of here. They, they, they shut us down. <laughs> no, actually, actually, the, the Patriots, uh, even uh, Edelman, I think, had, had volunteered, had wanted wanted us to try and find a fan in their area. And yeah. I, I just think the... We, we only did six episodes again for this season, so they, they now, just Now, is the limited. season wrapped, or can people still submit their, uh, their season, friends and season family? Season two's done. Season yeah. two's yeah, season so two they give some good ratings, we can get season, season three. Yeah, and three. Then, then, then they submit all the information they want. All right. yeah. okay. Well, you go to the website, <laughs> nfl.com slash network, and Tackle My Ride, name of the show, premieres tonight, 8 p.m., on the NFL Network, I'll be watching. Watch Lamar Woodley and James Torres go at it. Uh, me, I'm going to be in uh, Chicago, Park West, doing a one-man show. That's September 23rd. That's next Saturday, right? So in about a week, I think, is when, uh, when I'll be there. Minneapolis and Nashville. And then we got live shows everywhere. And just go to amcarola.com and find out where we're going to be and what we're doing. And we'll keep you up on uh, all the things you need. You can uh, listen to uh, Matt's podcast, Shift and Steer. Subscribe, Podcast yeah, One, you. all that. Support the show. Check out carcastshow.com and click the Amazon banner and all that good stuff. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Lamar Woodley, James Torres, and Matt the Moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs> For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.